Hi, I'm James Clem. I have this question often, and this question came in on my YouTube channel, and I think it's a good point of discussion. And I'm gonna show a video that's on my Clem Institute teaching site that I talk about occlusal reduction and making the prime scan software work really well, or you could say other prior CERC softwares. Prep is everything in our clinical theater. It's setting the case up for success, and the software has a lot of intelligence in it. But how do we get the software workflow to work the best for us, right? And also making sure that the engineering qualities of our restoration based off of the material we're using is gonna work a long time in the patient's mouth. We have a lot of good products today. This question was more about Emacs, and let me, kind of read it to you. Uh, he says, hi, Dr. Clem. I find that my main problem is probably occlusal reduction. Yeah, I've been working on that for a long time. And even after 37 years of prepping, I still have to work on it a little bit more. Sometimes I find that if I reduce too much, I will lose retention form. And that, that can happen. I only use Emacs and I wanted to know about how much you are reducing it. Thank you. Well, thanks for asking the question. So here's the deal. In our clinical theater today, when I'm looking at my clinical demands, location of tooth in the mouth like a second molar, and I don't have a lot of occlusal reduction room, then I may have to choose a material other than Emacs like zirconia, and that really comes in handy. Or the other option is to do more of a retentive, adhesive-wise, restoration if there's enough enamel remaining. I don't do a lot of crowns if there's not a crown present. I will do a full crown if there's cervical issues such as decay, or if I'm taking off a prior crown, then I need to drop the margin. Or if a patient has a high carry index and I'm concerned about that, then I'm gonna drop the margins. But occlusal reduction is everything. I wanna share with you this video I have on my teaching website at theclemminstitute.com, and it is a membership site. There's CE on that site. So if you really wanna spend a lot of time with me and my curriculums, it's all on my site. Our site's in over 100 countries, and I really enjoy making the videos. In fact, it's my main thing I do now with my teaching outside of other things I'm doing, right? It never ends. So let's go through that video on occlusal reduction, and then I'll wrap it up, okay? One of the secrets to making the software really flow is how we prepare. And more of it is about occlusal reduction. If we have enough occlusal reduction for the material we're using, the software really proposes very, very well when you're using biogeneric individual. I can't overemphasize that. And I've been practicing dentistry for 36 years. And three years prior to that, I was in dental school. So that's 39 years of prepping and I still occasionally have to go back and add more reduction to the occlusal table of my preps. One thing I like about the Prime Scan and CEREC is that once I'm in that design screen with the cursor details, I will see fairly quickly whether I have enough reduction. If I don't have enough reduction, I don't spend a lot of time with my tools trying to create a thicker occlusal table because the proposing <laughs> of this biogeneric individual is profound. I'm all about morphology so we can control the occlusal surface to get optimal function and decrease the lateral forces when that patient is functioning on the restoration that we're creating. And the way you start that process is to get enough reduction. So if we need more reduction, just go back and reduce that area on the prep that you need and now with the auto cutout feature, go back to the acquisition screen, scan over that prep again, and it will gather that new information so we have enough occlusal thickness on our material. Now, the other thing I want to make a point of here is that you need to know the material you're going to use before you start prepping. And you'll see this formula, right? What does that formula say? It may seem like a lot of reduction, but it's really not. It's minimal thickness recommendations by the manufacturer times two to two and a half right? And quite often when we're reducing, we reduce for the final morphology. It may not be the condition of that existing tooth if it's already flat and it doesn't fit 
the morphological flow of the Kerpa Spee and Wilson for that arch. So it's real important to know that I spend as much time on my occlusal reduction as I do any other surface on that tooth. And we strategically shape it similar to the flow of the occlusal table that we want for that final restoration. Spend the time doing the reduction now. I work with Meisinger and we have what we call the JKO2 prep kit. And that's my standard kit for most of my preparations in the mouth. And you'll see a link of that below in this video or you can go to the Meisinger website and just type in the JKO2 kit and it will have it there for you. I wanna prep, I wanna be proficient. The other thing I want to know when I'm prepping is what type of margin style is in the best interest of that patient. If they already have a lot of recession, I'm probably going to use zirconia on a posterior tooth and I'll use 3Y strength zirconia so I can use more of a feather margin. I think about these things before I start because I have to set the case up right. I like lithium disilicate. I've used Emax for years. That is my go-to restorative material when I'm prepping onlays or more conservative type of preps. Quite often posteriorly, if I don't have the room, I'm gonna go over to zirconia. And we need to know the various brands and whether they're a 3Y, 4Y, or 5Y strength factor because it will dictate how you prepare. Fortunately, the manufacturer will provide for us their recommendation for prep style. Pay attention to it because the most important thing in prepping the longevity of your restoration is occlusal reduction. It's not as dependent on axial reduction as we see occlusion, even though you want to appropriately prepare axial for your material. Look at that occlusion because that's really critical. The other way to make your software design flow go well is make sure you adjust the adjacent proximal contacts to the tooth you're working on if they need to be adjusted. That's how you control your inner proximal footprint. That's how you control your inner proximal embrasures. There's occlusal embrasure. That's really important because that inner proximal contact should start from a millimeter from the height of that marginal ridge in ideal form and function because that will provide a morphological shape so forces are deflective where they're absorbed within the material that you're placing and the support structure that it's on, whether it be an implant or tooth. The other thing I want to do is control that interproximal contact. So in most cases, unless they're really matured with recession, we can place the cervical portion of that contact four and a half millimeters from the bone. And with the call effect, we'll get healthy papillae form, which decreases buccal lingual food impacting later on in life. So those two prep things are so critical to optimizing your software flow cutting down your software design, also in seeding your final restoration. So I hope that was helpful. That's my basic clinical philosophy when I'm preparing. I remember doing all ceramic restorations before Emacs, lithium disilicate. We had to really pick and choose how we prepared and where we could place like a lucite which is a uh, impress. I had a hard time getting that out because it's been a while. I still use impress for the anterior work, but uh, I think posteriorly, Emax is still my go-to because I like more of a biomimetic approach, which conserve more tooth structure. And if you have enamel, you can use micro adhesion. If you don't have enamel, we have to use macro adhesion, which means we have to keep that retentive form. And you have to look at the clinical crown heights. Where is the biological width? Can you drop the margin? And if you can't drop that margin, then you're gonna have to think about a stronger material like a three Y zirconia where you can go to 500 microns in thickness. That gives you more latitude in your prep style and treating that tooth. So I hope this video clarifies a few principles prepping we can talk a lot more about and I have a lot more of those videos on my site but thanks for tuning in if you have any questions post them below make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell so that way you're notified when those new videos come on so thanks for watching I really like connecting with the world with YouTube by Facebook my online site it's just a lot of fun 
we are in a great time, particularly for those that are into in-office CAD CAM. The precision is there, the ease is there, the control is there. It's just a better lifestyle in my clinical theater. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you folks in that next video. Thank you.